Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games Real Time. My name is Joachim and today we will be playing Monsters on Board Solo. Alright, so we have two solo modes, the Beat Your Own Scare and the Versus Spider Jack and that is what we're going to be doing. We will be playing against Spider Jack. Alright, so as you can see I've already done the setup. Uh, I'll be red. Uh, and then yellow is spider jack. We have the pumpkin here, which is a round tracker. There's six rounds um, Here we have the available available uh, arch monster cards that you can purchase You can see the costs here and here we have the ghosts that you can purchase and their costs here now uh, first of all for people who already know the game uh, you might see the monster mixer back here I'm using it to put the ghosts in there if I'm not playing with expansions, I'm putting the ghosts in here so we don't need to have all the stacks and it saves on setup time. I'll get a second bag for the other stuff as well. Here is the deck of the other uh, arch monsters and so there are the ghosts. Here we have all the grunts. Now, they don't all have to be out. I just put them out uh, so you could see it. But you have the werewolves, you have the witch, you have the skeleton, the zombie, uh, Frankenstein, and an octopus. And um, this is a first player marker. Okay, just trucking along, but I'll always be first player in the solo game. All right, so that is this board, uh, so the main board. What do you see here? Well, this is where all the magic happens. First of all, um, what I'm going to do is give myself, well, normally what you do first round is you draw four dice. Dun, 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 dun. And then you roll them. And then you place them in the fear mobile. All right. In any order, it doesn't matter as long as you keep the face. And then I'll do the same for uh, Jack. So normally when you play with more people, everybody has their own car and then you fill it up. So he has five, six, a four, and a four. Okay. Okay, so what happens then in a normal play? First of all, you might see there's some smudges on my dice. I have to clean them better because you can see it also in the unboxing. There was some uh, sunflower oil apparently on the dice to stop them from getting attached to each other, to getting stuck to each other. So I just use the wet cloth, but apparently you do need to have some soap to really wipe it clean. So that's something that will be happening, but I wanted to make this gameplay faster, so I'll do it at a later date. So anyway, we have these dice. What are you going to do on your turn? This phase normally everybody does simultaneously. You take a die and you put it here in the garage. So once it's in the garage, once the, 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 the car will move over here, this car will come over here, I'll choose a die, and it'll go round and round and round, okay, until the dice are all gone, and you have four dice here. Then you will load, for example, if I took the two, then all four dice will be lowered one by one. Red, you can see the witch is red, so she will take one step and end up here, okay. Now if I have multiple reds, if I have another red, she would move again. So you can see these are actually locations. This is one location, two, three, four, and so on. You can even see the numbers and also the arrows you're supposed to follow, okay, all the way to the end. So you can also have two, you also have two different locations. Locations. If it's a house, it's a neighborhood, they don't have any actions. If it's a uh, tree, then it's a public area and then it does have uh, actions. These actions, what do they do? I'll explain that in a bit. Just know that when you move that way, all right? Once that's done, you will be taking your four dice and then placing them. One die will have to be here. This die will give you malice. You can see here a one or a two gives you one, three to four gives you two, five to six gives you three. Basically, that's money that you can then spend here to buy ghosts or cards. The other three will go here. Now, it doesn't matter how you place them, okay? You can put all three in the first row. You can just one in the first row, two in the third row, just one each. It doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you always put it in the leftmost spot of that row, okay? And also, if you put this die here, only the number counts, the other actions don't die. Uh, don't die, don't count, <laughs> you don't do them. So let's say I had another die from a different car, right? I'm just using these as an example. And then I put it here. 
So then the six is just a value that maybe later I'll get juice from it. But here is a hand and the hand means uh, malice. So I will go up one spot here and then that's done. But for example, if we flip this, the six would have given me three malice. And then if the red one was here, I would have a red foot. So my witch who was here would move. Boom. This would activate, which means place a minion. These are minions and you can place them wherever you want here. But basically, mostly minions are used to jump over. So, for example, if I had had a minion here and then I moved, sorry, zombie, and then I moved, I would not have jumped here. I would have jumped over him immediately there. So it allows you to go faster and get to the exit faster. So let's say I put this guy here. So if he, she moves again, she will jump over him again and activate another minion. So this minion spot sorry, this minion spot actually allows you to add a minion or to move an already existing minion to somewhere else. So even if you have all of them on the board, you can still move them around. You also have, oh, look at here, I have another minion sign. So I can put the next one, I'll put it here. So if my witch moves twice, she'll do jump, jump and go very fast. Then this one, this I kind of token, that means that you move one of your summoning stones forward. Now, if I move this one spot, I will get another malice. If I leave here in one spot, I will get nothing. Here I'll get another minion that I can put on. So let's say I just take this one for a malice and it goes forward, right? That's how it works. So then you do the other two dice that you've collected. You do the same thing with different faces being different actions. So for example, this five die has plus minus. That means if I place it, then I can change the value of other die. So had this been a five, I could have made it six or can also do minus, can make it a five. Or this two can become a three or a four or a one. But of course, the, the actions that you've done are already gone. You cannot do them again. And also these actions of changing numbers, you cannot use it on the die it's printed on. Now, if your zombie ends up on a plus minus, then you can change any die, all right? But once again, it doesn't activate any powers. It just changes the numbers, which is good for your end game scoring, but more about that later. Another uh, icon is the jack-o'-lantern, basically spider jack, but as you can see the icons here, that allows you to uh, add one point to the dice here. You can see they all start at one. What does that mean? If it's one, at the end of the game, only your first die counts. If you have two, your first two die counts. If you have six, all of your dice count. They count towards these cards to create, uh, to get points. They count towards your uh, prophecies, which is also endgame scoring. And they also count towards this question mark. Because if this keeps going forward and you reach the question mark, and also next to it is a ball of spook juice, this will activate your die. So for example, if I have these three dice here and I have a three here, then this question mark will allow me to add five plus four plus two is 11. I get 11 spook juice, so 11 points. But if I had only had one here, it would only count two. So it's very important that you make sure all these uh, dice are, are able to be activated. Okay, and then what else do we have? The only thing left here is the spook juice uh, symbol. If it is on one of the dice, it means you will get the value of the die in points or if your um, Frankenstein is on it you'll just get one spook juice or two spook juice or five and eight so he's basically a walking point machine all right I think that covers most of everything uh, of the icons you're going to be following the, the, the route here and trying to get as many people to finish because at the end of the game when you have uh, someone who finishes you will get three points for every color dice that you have here. So if the game were to end now, which would be really sad and is also impossible because there's only three dice, but whatever. If it were to add now, and now I would get three points because I have one die here. Now if I have five dice here, I would get 15 points, three times five. If I manage to finish with two witches, then it would double my points and I'd have 30 points, okay? And there are ways to get uh, more than one uh, witch in the game. So let me first reset this a little bit and put all these dice back in the fear mobile. Dun, 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 dun. Right. Oh, by the way, if you reach eight here and you gain more, 
uh, malice, you don't get it. It's just lost, okay? So try not to do that because it's wasted. Um, all right, I think here I've done everything. Very important, once again, the houses are neighborhoods and the trees are public spaces because it's mentioned on the cards quite a lot. Before we continue, we have these prophecy cards, right? There's a bunch of them and you, you get one at the start of the game. When we played the first time, we just give people two and you choose one. Although the, the, the rule book says you just get one. But, you know, I think that's a pretty easy house rule if you want to have some choice. So what does this mean is these three rows, they're actually these three rows here. They call it um, Jack's, what is it called again? I'm sure it's somewhere here. Um, Order of Spider Jack, that's what this is called. And these things get knocked over a lot, these summoning stones. So basically, this is the first row. And this can get me 4, 6, 10, or 16 points if I have the equal rank. So basically, if I have a 2 here, and then I have a 2, and 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 I get 16 points. Of course, it's pretty difficult, but, you know, that is uh, one requirement. The other one, which gives me 14 points, is 4 dice of the same color in a row. Okay? Or just in general, I guess. I'll have to double check. And then here, Ascending Lord uh, dice rank. So basically, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I do that, 20. So if you do all three of them, then you can get 50 points, 50 spook juice. So this can be really important at the end of the game. All right. So as I said, first phase, you roll, you roll the dice, put them in the car. Second phase, you take it out, place it here. Third one, or let's say it steps. Third one, you move them down and your uh, characters move. And by the way, even though you have four dice here, you don't have to start with the first one. You can start with number three, and then number two, and then four, and then one. The order doesn't matter, okay? So they move, do all the things. If you move one and you get you hit an action, then you immediately have to do the action. You cannot wait, okay? So uh, make sure you follow the order. Then once all four have been moved down and these guys have moved, then you, you can see here at the arrows, three of these dice will move here and one die will move there. So one die will give you malice. The other three will activate the powers on their die, which you will then once again move. Once again, if it moves something here and you activate something else, you do it first, okay? Um, so that's all done. Then we will go here, which is basically the buy phase. I think it's called the spook phase. Whoever is first player, so with this uh, token, right, they will be allowed to buy something. For example, this uh, goes series two, two, three, four, and three, three, four. Or you can buy a card, three, three, four, four, five. You can only buy one thing, and then it's the next person. And then eventually it will come back to you, and you can buy another thing, and so on. You can also pass. And if not everyone has passed, right? If let's say you're with three people, you pass, the next person passes, the third person buys something, it goes back to you and you can buy again if you want to. But of course, if you pass thinking everyone's gonna pass or someone's gonna buy something and they don't and they all pass, yeah, then too bad, you know, you're not buying anything because everyone passed. So going back to here, if you buy anything, let's say you buy this guy, then these will move for, move to the side and a new one will immediately come out, okay? Same goes for the ghosts. So let's talk about the ghosts first. These ghosts, you might think you buy them and you get what it says, done. It's not like that at all. You buy them and let's start with this one. For example, this one is yellow and it says two minions. That means you can take these ghosts, this ghost, and you will put them on one of the yellow spots on your board here. For example, this first spot has no action, right? It's just an empty spot, your zombie moves on it, nothing happens. However, if you put this on, and then next round your zombie moves, suddenly you can place two minions, or move one minion twice, or whatever, right? So now he does the action of that ghost. There, there are some exceptions. Of course, this is yellow, you put it on the yellow, um, then you have all the other colors that you put on their own colors, or you have this one, this rainbow one, right? Basically means you can put it on any spot. And this is another action that I haven't talked about. It's called the swap. You can swap two dice that are on your board here, okay? Oh, and that brings me uh, something to something that I've forgotten. With the changing the plus and minus of a die, you can never do that with your jack-o'-lantern dice, okay? You cannot, you cannot adjust them with a bones 
uh, icon. Okay, you have three special ones here. I'm saying special ones because we played earlier and then only two of them came out. And now at the start of the game, three of them came out. So what does this mean? This means you can add an extra monster. So this does not go on your track, but this goes on one of these three empty spaces and you will immediately take the color, so a pink octopus, and put it here. So next time, when your dice activates, both of these will move. So whenever a uh, uh, die moves down and allows you to move, you will move each of those colors grunts. So in this case, you could say, oh, this guy goes here, and this guy jumps over it because they can't be on the same spot, and now I get one malice. Done. That's how that would work, okay? And of course, once you pay Malice, you decrease your Malice. Uh, that's how that works. The same thing, of course, for a green one. So a Frankenstein, you put it there. And a blue one, uh, a wolf, you put it there. A, wolf, um, a werewolf. But of course, you can see only three spots. So you cannot get all of them. You cannot get four or whatever, okay? All right, so that's how ghosts work. Ghosts, why would you place them? First of all, the empty spaces become valuable, but also sometimes these cards want you to do it so you can get extra points. These are endgame scoring cards, but they do have a special function. For example, let's take a look at this guy. Gain two spook juice for each adjacency created between green and pink lord dice in your order of spider jack. So once again, the dice here, these are called lord dice. Okay, that's what the rule book refers to. So this means for any green and pink die that are next to each other so it could be horizontal but also vertical and another summoning stone falls so it could be horizontal or vertical for each of them you get two spook juice points so if you buy this card for three you just put it here and then for the rest of the game of course you're going to try to make these combinations so you get a lot of points however if throughout the game you say oh no i made a mistake or i need to make some urgent changes but the dice are really not helping me you can flip it over and then you can do one of these main actions and then throw the card away all right so it's a choice between is this card going to give me x amount of spook juice or can i get even more spook juice if i just use one of these actions and have an effect here all right so that's how that works then you have this guy over here uh, well, I'll go over them. Oh, ninja. I'll go over them later, all right? What they all do when we do the actual game. But basically, suffice to say, all these cards have a specific power. And you can also look that up in the rule book where they go over them. As you can see here, what all of them might mean. All right. Same thing for your prophecy cards. They're all explained what they do. Okay, so I think that covers the game. There will be six rounds. And at the end of the sixth round, you still have a buy phase, but then after that, it is done. And also these special actions on the back of the cards, right? You can use that even during endgame scoring. So if you have one of the cards that hardly scores, say, okay, I'm not gonna score it at all. I'm just gonna flip it over, use it for the ability. Okay, uh, which sometimes can really give you a bunch more points than you might have expected. All right. So I think that covers uh, everything. I've said that before, I know. Yeah, if there's anything else that I've forgotten, um, then I will uh, add a note uh, or check the uh, description below. Uh, there might be something there or the comments, yeah. All right, so then I think we can start with the solo game. So I'm gonna explain how that works. So we're uh, fighting or, or competing against jack there's a lot of difficulty modifiers that you can add it says also in the rules you can do this and this to make it more difficult but we're playing on easy okay we're playing on super easy because i'm playing this so people can know how to play and just remember you can make it a lot more difficult than this because easy is zero monstrous is seven so you can go up to level seven for difficulty so how did i do the setup i drew a random die out of the bag which of course was not filmed it was a pink one so the octopus became his monster. I took out his cards, which were 10 cards with this color die on it. Okay, that's done. That was the uh, setup for that. Then, um, da -da -da. 
Then he gets a fear mobile, which is pointed that way. And mine is also pointed that way. So I hope editing wise, my finger is going the correct way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> I think it should, yeah. Anyway, I can see the cars, they both the face that way. So, you know, it always goes like this. Okay. So, and when you pass it to him, always put it in the same spot. So like this, for example, right? And then hop again and so on, right? So, um, then, uh, so here starts with one monster. If I wanted to make it more difficult, I could add two monsters, I could add three monsters and uh, other uh, changes. So then when we draft dice, right? I'm gonna take one um, and then he will also draw one, but he will flip a card and then we'll know what he draws, okay? So for example, let's flip it over now. So you have white, uh, black, actually, even though it looks gray, white, black, and pink. So what does it mean? First of all, color matching current symbol. Now there is no color matching, there's no white ones. Second is the highest or lowest based on the current selection symbol. So of course, it's the first die. So we're just looking at this one. Uh, second die, third die will be this. So we're looking for the highest rank, which will be the red six. So we can stop there already. He chooses the red six. Now, if he hadn't had, if he didn't have that, right, then the, the one would be closest to the front car or closest to the rear of the car. All right, so, and then you put the die onto the card on top of the icon. There we go. And then after he has selected four dice, he will score three of them, but that's later. So now first it's me. So potentially I could already see what he might get. So if I take black, if I don't take black, he's going to get it for sure. If I don't take black, he's going to get the pink die because he's also going to go for the highest. Um, but I'm just not, I'm just going to ignore him to be honest. It's easy, right? So I'm just going to play my own game. So I need an equal Lord dial rank. He has four, four and five. There's one four here. So if I'm able to get a four, then, or two fours, then I'm three fours even, then I'm well, well on the way to get six of them. But I also need one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's 20 points. While the equal Lord dice rank is only 16, but there's no one available. And um, so I'm just gonna go for four because that four will, well, actually that two looks really interesting. Yeah, actually I'm gonna go with two because it gives me a minion. It allows me to move my witch forward and also allows me to move this forward. So I'm gonna go for the two. There we go, so much for strategy. And then these cars here. So he is gonna take black because he looks what he wants. Then I am going to take, uh, I can still get a four and move my wolf. That's not too bad. Five allows me to change the number. So I could use two and then play five to change a two to a one. Um, yeah, you know what I'll do, but then this is what the, the same color, right? I'm gonna go for the blue four, there you go. And then boom, 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 and go again. Up. So now he is going to go for the lowest value, which is the yellow four. Well, first for pink, but pink is not an option. Then the highest or lowest based on the arrow. So he goes to the lowest, it's four. So um, I could also go for double five, actually, if I want to have the same one for the top row. Yeah. Um, Inside of pink, and pink gives me what? Malice. Gives me more malice as we so money to spend. But then yellow allows me to boost these dice, which is really good as well. And also gives me plus minus later on. I'm just gonna go for the four. And that means that uh hop. boom, boom. There we go. So We'll flip the cards again, just to have original cards back. So now it's time to score his die. First of all, we look at the highest value, but there's a tie. And then we check, does he already have stuff of that? There's nothing here yet. So, well, we do have this one, but the pink is not the highest. So he'll take the red six, that gives him six juice. Okay. 
then we see if uh, if there's anything else here that would then score his court but this is the only one and it's just one die so he'll get another juice for that that's it then we do the black six all right same thing he gets six points and then one because it's alone so another seven so he's at 14 all right he's going fast and then he scores the four once again four points and then one because it's the only yellow so that is five points so he's at 19 already yeah, so it was not a good idea to give him two sixes. <laughs> I think that's clear. All right, so then uh, I'll do what I do. So first of all, my witch will move one spot and then she'll move again because I have two reds. That allows me to place a minion. So I'm doing it this way. So potentially I could put a block one of these spots. So either my werewolf could immediately go here or my uh, zombie can immediately go here. So um or i could put it here so my witch can go farther later on i know i'm going to get more red dice because i want to have four red dice so i could try to have my uh, witch make a run for it so i'm going to put it there um okay so that's done then blue the werewolf comes here and then yellow the zombie comes here then i will put uh, my dice out here first of all I'm gonna put the two here I'm not gonna do the one two three four five six yet that's for later so the two here so it allows my witch to move again it allows me to move another minion put another minion down which I'm gonna put here so then she can jump over again later on and this allows me to put another minion so here again so my witch can race really quickly then i have this i will use that to get one malice so that's the eye right and that's my die done then i'm going to put a um huh the question is which one of these do you want to put here because it's actually good to have two fours and then also be able to boost my dice here and move my uh my my uh, werewolf i always want to say wolverine for some reason hmm okay i am going to go for the double four so my werewolf is going to move here which will increase a die i'll increase this die to two but then i have two more faces so i'm just going to put one here the three and this one will become two And then the movement we've already done. And then we have yellow put here as well. So they always have to, all have to have the same rank, remember? So I can do three more. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this one on four. So that's plus two. And this one also on four. There we go. And then this one will become a three malice. There we go. All right, so that turn is done. Then we go to the spook phase, but I always uh, have the opportunity to, to buy first. Now, it's a little bit, little bit of a shame that I could not buy um, a red one because another witch would go really fast. But um, I should try to avoid him getting pink because that will increase his points later on. So I think I'm just going to buy that number two. I have four though. Um, oh yeah, I was actually going to go over what everything does. So this I already explained. Here is gain two spook juice for each adjacency created. I also explained that already. So if you have green and pink next to each other, either horizontal or vertical, you get two juice for each set. This one is gain one spook juice for each town space your Frankenstein grunt has spooked. So he hasn't moved yet. It's basically for every town space. Town, right? I guess that's the... the, the I've been mean, calling it public, but it's town. That, those are the trees. Um, all right. And then we have the gain 10 spook juice if you have three minions in the same neighborhood. So uh, at the moment, I only have one here, one here, one here, but I could move them around and then get 10 points at the end of the game. Very important. 
and then gain one spook juice for each town space your octopus grunt has spooked. Well, once again, octopus is not moving. And here, gain 10 spook juice if you have three black lord die in one of your spider jack order rows. At the moment, I have zero black die. This is also not good for me. So I'm just going to spend two for now. And I'm going to buy this uh, pink one. And this goes here, remember. And the pink one goes there. So if I do have pink dies, at least these will boost forward. And it's mostly I'm blocking him. That's the biggest reason. So I get a new token from the bag. And then it's his turn. Uh, so that's a uh, brown foot, a red foot, I guess. So then for him, assign the numbers one to five, one to each spot in a given market row, starting at the right and going left. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. He will purchase the ghost token in positioning matching the rank of his unscored Lord die. So this one. So he will buy this one, number five. So this will go together with this. So there's now two there. Add the ghost token to Spider Jack's court, then refill as normal. So a new one comes out. And discard any arch monster cards that were in the same position as the selected ghost tokens and refill as normal. Okay, so this guy gets discarded. And this guy gets added. This is gain two spook juice for each adjacency created between blue and pink lord die. So basically the same thing as this, but then blue and pink. Um, and then return the unscored lord die to the bag. All right. So that makes sense because both this one and this one goes back to the bag after that. Also, I get to buy again actually because I have two left. And um, should I get another Frankenstein for the juice just to get more people out? Or should I get a yellow so I can get more minions out? But more minions out is not really going to give me any points unless I get this one, of course. Um... <laughs> I'm going to go for more people. Let's get more people out. Even though there's a, there's a lack of space here. Okay. So that puts my malice on zero. And then <clears throat> the rightmost spaces also are discarded. So two new ones will come out here. And one new card will come out there. So the new card that comes out is gain one spook juice for each town space your werewolf grunt has spooked. So those cards are actually good if you have two of the same color. So actually I could really go for this now and then try to go as, as far as possible with those two. All right, so pink two jack-o'-lantern stuff and then two change your numbers. All right, second round. So, um, all right, so same thing again. We will draw four dice, both of us, and then roll them. All right, this is for Jack. So six, five, six, and three. Very high numbers. No fours. Not good for me. So much black. All right, wow, three threes and a one. So the one is at least good for me. All right, so the first thing Jack is gonna do is flip this over. So he wants a white one. There's no white one, so he's gonna go for the highest one. And if there's a tie, uh, it doesn't really say. Next one is closest to the front of the car, but they're both in the back. And then I can just choose, I think. Yeah, I guess I just choose because there's still, uh, or maybe the arrow means the highest top then, I guess. Or just do the green one. So like that. Because it says color matching, not possible. Highest or lowest, highest, but there's a tie. Closest to the front, closest to the rear. But they're both in the rear. So yeah, maybe next time I should avoid putting them both in the back. Lesson learned. But then this is going to happen again. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I'm gonna get this one just because of number one and then dun, 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 dun. so now he's gonna get the highest value but it's closest to the front 
where there's a tie and then closer to the rear. So I guess I'll take this one. And then I will take, um, so I could take the six and put it here. Number wise, I could get the three and then maybe change it, change the number later on, potentially. And there's no two. Um, I get, the, I guess, get the three because it's pink, and then my guys will move, which is good. Hup. So Jack is going to get the lowest value, which is five. And then I will get um, threes are okay because I can easily change them to fours later on. So I like trees. Tree threes. Threes are good for me. Um, but is it, should I go for black? That would get me then moving one of those summoning stones. Green would allow me to move that guy too, though. And there's another red coming. Um, yeah. This one gives me this one gives me money too. The red ones for the red one for sure is gonna go here. And give me as much money as possible to buy some stuff. Um, yeah, I'll just get green, uh, just to get moving, you know, to get these guys out. So, um, so I'll get six, and he will get the black three. Wow, he has three green ones. Uh, that can't be good, to be honest. Okay, so let's score him first. So he gets six points, and then plus one, because it's the only one. So that's seven. So that puts him on 16. Oh, 26, I guess. Um, then the next one, so it's three. But now there's two dice, so it's plus two, so it's five. So that will be 31. He has no endgame scoring, so I guess that's why he's uh, running away now. And then there's a five plus three, so that's eight. So, uh, yeah, so he's at, he's at 39. I'm at zero at the moment. All right, so then it's my turn. So black one goes forward, so the skeleton is now here. Then pink, so this one is going to jump over this guy and be here. Then it's green, this one is going to jump over that one and come here. And then it's red. She is going to jump over. Oh, actually, I should have done that first. Okay, okay, change. So put these two back, because I have to figure out what I want. So she goes first. Jumps over this. So that allows me to place a minion. So I could immediately have the pink one go here, or the green one go there. And I'm going to have the pink one go there. So he now jumps over the minion here, gives me one malice. And then green, he just goes where we previously stated he would go, which is there. All right, cool. So then uh, do this. My one goes here, so I get another malice. And uh, I can move these up twice. So I don't need to have a minion. Well, maybe I do. So I'll put one here, which gives me a minion. Now move one forwards to the movement. So I have one minion. Um, I want to get my pink ones out. So if I move pink now, this one will jump to here immediately, which is pretty crazy. All right, so I've done everything. Then I have three and three. These three will come here. This one will go there. So um, I'll do this one first. That allows me to get a jack-o'-lantern. So that will be number two. Then uh, I can move one of these. So but first I'm going to do the minion. The minion will be here to allow my pinks to jump like crazy. So then I'm going to, I moved uh, the minion first, right? Then I move this onto a foot so I can choose whatever I want to move. So of course I'm going to use the pink one, which gives me another malice. There we go. Then I use three. Here we go. Increase one of my dice here. I'm going to move this up to five. 
uh, this is actually upside down. Then I can change the value of a die, so this one will become a 4. And then I can use one of these stones again. So um, I think I'll move this one up. Okay. All right, then I have the 6, which will go here. That gives me 3 malice, so I have 6 malice. So I'll be able to invest a little bit. Okay. Especially happy with the jump this pink one made. All right. Then um, we have this book face, so I get to buy first. I have six, so I can actually make kind of like a splurge. Gain one spook juice for each town space your octopus grunt has spooked. So uh, it's a town space, all right? So this, this is just the whole town, actually. So this is public and this is neighborhood, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to double check. Yeah, so the public spaces are correct. Town space is just each spot. So the moment it's one, two, three, four five six already if i buy this one so i am gonna buy that one for four and uh, i'll just place it here below so i'm down to two and a new one comes out and then he is gonna buy the third spot and this is gonna go away together with this one so he's gonna buy the third spot so one two three he buys yellow that goes here now okay uh, up, up. We come from the bag. All right. So that's what he does. Um, and then also the three here goes away. So gain two spook juice for each adjacency created between blue and pink. That's gone, but I didn't care about that one anyway. Oh, and by the way, the new one was gain three spook juice for each ghost you have in a neighborhood. So at the moment, I have zero ghosts. And this one gained two spook juice for each adjacency. This one, this time is yellow and black, which also doesn't really apply to me. So I have two left, cannot buy a card, but I could buy either this one, which allows me to swap uh, dice or get a blue one and get a werewolf out, which allows me to flip these dice. Uh, I don't really want to buy the werewolf because I feel like I'm already I have too many to, to to focus on now because I need to focus on green and pink. If I have another werewolf, it's going to be too much. I feel, even though you have this one as well. Um, yeah, I could focus on that one too. Oh, you know what? Let's just do it. That way, they're all gone. Two. I'm at zero. Put a werewolf on. But he's going to have to go here first, though. So that's kind of like a downer. Okay, so this goes down, but as said, this one also goes away. Discard it. This one goes away. Discard it. This is the end of the round. So, uh, the new card that comes out is... Gain 12 spook juice if the sum of the Lord dice is 24. So you have 6 dice, right? Like this. And if you add them all up, it has to be 24. So, for example, now I have 8, 10, 11 only. So I'm not there yet at all. Um, and then we need to have two ghost tokens. I'm thinking maybe the stacks are faster anyway, because you always have to go into the bag anyway. I don't know. You can always let me know in the comments what you think. Is the bag fast, faster or stacks? All right, so third round. If you ever forget the amount of rounds, it's easy. Three dice is one round. So one, two, so third round. Once again, we draw dice. Four dice for him. Okay. Four. And now make sure that the values are not <laughs> next to each other. Spread them out. Okay, and then four for me. Same here. Oh, it's going to be difficult because it's all fours. But really good for me, fours-wise. Because I really need those fours. All right. So then... Let's first do him. He flips a card. He wants a white one. There's no white one. He'll go for the highest. The highest one is five. So he'll take a red five. Okay. I really want to have fours. But the fours will not allow me to change a die. But it will allow me to move one of those uh, forward if I choose a specific one. The six I really don't need. The blue one allows me to move that's really nice. So I'm going to use the blue four. 
put it here. Okay. And then he is going to go for green. There's no green. The highest one is a six. So he's really going, going all in on red. Oh yeah, four, three, and three. Um, it's like nothing that I really want. I want them either to move forward or allow me to move some stuff around. Um, the three would allow me to move this one forward. It gets me a little bit of malice, but I'd like minion more, but then I need to move more. I think I'll be able to move more if I want to. So I'm going to get the, the three. This is going to be the same color, right? I'm really messed up here, but I only need to have four of the same color. So I don't have to be stuck with red there, honestly. I'm going to get red anyway. So this will be here. So it'd be good to get another four. If I have, if I have another, if I have another four, this will be set. So I guess I'll take yellow because he has the most yellow. So I might as well try to block him a bit. I get a three. Up. Okay. So then he will take the lowest, which is a black three. And then I will take a red four. That way my witch will move as well. That's always nice. And then I will get a black four and he will get a yellow four. There we go. All right, so first he will score. So he's gonna get five, six, and a ghost is two. So he's gonna get eight points for that. So that's eight. So that's, uh, so there you go, 47. Um, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I'm just double checking if, if I'm really scoring correctly. It is correct. So six, seven, eight plus two is 10. There we go. He's already at 57. And then black will be one, uh, so three and four, five. Okay, so five. So one, two, three, four, five. He's at 62, I'm at zero. I'm gonna have to really, really do something about that. Yeah, I'll double check the scoring again. I do really think it's correct the way I'm doing it. Well, we'll see. All right, my turn. First of all, blue moves. No, 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 first of all, red moves. So she jumps over this and can place two minions or move two minions. So I'm gonna be moving blue. So I want blue to go as far as possible. Um, so I'm gonna move this one here that's one and then this one i'm gonna move here then i move blue so this one is gonna jump boom 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 and increase one over here so this will become six so i can score all of them later on then the yellow one can so now the mummy moves and he can do plus minus of course this three will become a four there we go. And then we have black, the skeleton. We'll go here, which allows me to move one of these guys. So I'm gonna be able to move it probably two times more. So I might be able to score all of this. Unless I wanna move more, more of these uh, minions around. Um, I'll just move one here. Scoring can always happen later. Okay, so move one there, that's done. Um, then I need to use them here, right? So I'm going to, if I use this one and then that one here, the whole row is done. I think I should use blue then. But then I need to use, okay, I'm gonna use three here. So that allows me to move this one here. I can move a minion. And I'm gonna move this minion from here to here. Uh, or maybe to pink. Yeah, to pink actually. All right, 
then I can increase two pumpkins. So it's going to be a five and a three. Okay. Then, um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm not going to move it to pink. Or, you know, I will we'll leave it to pink, even though this is a foot. So he's just going to land here. Or he's going to jump over everyone and land here. Yeah, you know, it'll be like that. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so I'll put this one here. So the lantern, this one will become, let's just make this one to five. And then blue moves, so he jumps, boom, 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 here, all right. And then um, the two lanterns already did, right? So then it's this one, two lanterns again. So my lanterns are already maxed out. So six and six. But then, more importantly, this moves. So uh, I'll go here, that gives me one malice. And the four goes here, which gives me another two malice, three. Actually, I said more importantly, because I thought I was going to activate this, but that will happen later. But this is already done. So technically, I already have 16 points. So that's good. Um, all right, so that's all done. Then we buy. All right, so um, I have only three. So it's either going to be... Uh, this would be really good, but it scores at the end of the game. Like, I have three minions now, but uh, the werewolf, though? I'm going to buy the werewolf. Okay. So the werewolf will be jumping. That costs three, the new one. Okay, once again, adjacency, blue and yellow. Also not worth it. Okay, so his turn. So he's going to buy number four. And this goes away. Same with this one. So he's going to buy number four. And uh, number four, so one, two, three, four is blue. He didn't have any blue yet. And then also number four here, the 24 total one goes away. So, next one is gain 10 spook juice if you have three green lord dice in one of your spider jack order rows. Now that hasn't happened yet. This one will also go away because it's the end of the round. So the new card that comes out is gain one spook juice for each town space your octopus grunt has spooked. So it's the same as this one. So if I buy that one too, I can score that one too. Alright, so this goes here, but this one goes away. So up, up up and two tokens come out okay so um that is the end of the round then we start the new round so round number four once again three 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 rounds we start number four. First, his dice all right so two two five and one and then I need to check something real quick. Yeah, just checking if you guys could see everything here, but you can, so it's fine. And then, so the blues are really good for me because it allows me to move my werewolf. Okay, so what do I do? What do I have with fours though? Always so many fours. Four, come on, four, two, and six. All right, first him, so he draws a new card. White, no, highest is a pink five. All right, so my turn then. Uh, if I use red, I'll just go down. There's no minion there yet. Um, also, no way to move a minion because the earliest one is there. Red would be nice just because of the color. Uh, this is supposed to be a three. So if I put a two there, they can swap. Yeah, and this has a minion on it. So I like it. All right. So hop. He's going to take a pink, but there's no pink available. He's going to take the highest, which would be a yellow six. Okay, so... I'm going to go for the blue two, maybe, because it allows the werewolves to move twice. That's a lot of jumping over each other. 
especially because you can move a minion. So yeah, for sure, it's a no-brainer. Then he's going to take the lowest, which is the blue one. There we go. And then I could get another blue to get the wolves really going. Or just get a red. But the pumpkins are now useless. That's the downside. But I'm going to get this one because it allows me to move the, uh, the summoning again. So the blue one will go here and the pink one will come to me here. All right, so let's score his ones first. So yellow six, so six, seven, eight, ten points again. There we go. Then pink five plus this, which is three, so it's eight. So that's another ten. So it's at eighty. And then one plus one ghost is two, so it's three. So he's at eighty-three. I'm really curious to see if I can ever catch him, to be honest. Uh, it seems a bit crazy. All right, so <laughs> especially because this is easy. All right, my turn then. Um, I move, well, we'll stop for a second there. We'll see what is best first. Um, it's kind of a shame that I went for the werewolves because they give me jack-o'-lanterns, which I've already maxed out, but okay. Uh, what if I move pink first? Well, I'll just move pink first. One, two, three, four. And that gives me one malice. So I, I bought it last time, right? So I'm at one now. I guess I can just move all of them, doesn't really matter. Blue, boom, boom. That would give me one jack o' lantern. That's irrelevant. My witch goes down here, nothing happens much. Yellow goes up here, nothing happens much. Okay, and then I get to place them. So my pink one will move again. That just puts her on an empty spot. But I can move a minion there first and then here for more malice. Um, blue moves twice though, but that means they can just jump on top of each other. But if I put a minion, then they could go a lot farther as well. So I have the two here. I'll put a two here. So I'll place a minion like this one, put it on blue and then they move twice. So boom, 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 but it doesn't matter. It doesn't happen. And then once more, boom, boom, boom. All right. So these two are actually really quite close to finishing already, which is good. Then we have the pink one which will be doing something very similar um, I'll put it here so I'll take this guy away because there's no more blue so that he's useless put him here then I get to move an octopus so boom 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 I get two malice so I'm at three and then I get to change the value of a die. So this is one, three, two. So I need a four here. I already have a four. So I think I'm going to change the two to three. What does three do? Or I'll change four here. I need to put four there. Okay, I'm going to change this one to three because I'm going to use that one for malice. And then I use this one for here. So it is two jack-o'-lanterns which are useless, but I get to move the uh, summoning. Wait, does five have summoning at all? Yes, it does. But Okay, I'm going to do five and put this one back to two. Put this one here, so I'll allow, I can move my summoning gauge, which will be here. And then uh, plus minus, this will become three anyway. And then the three will go down, which will give me two malice, puts me on five. There you go. All right, then um, I buy because I have five. Well, because I'm always first. Um, 
for each ghost you have in the neighborhood that's not really necessary all these are not really good three green no the jumping pink one is good but i feel like i could wait until it goes down a bit because he's going to buy this one so he's going to become four um so i could pass like in a normal game and he's going to buy and then i can buy so i'm going to pass so he buys number four so black and uh, this goes here new one comes out there we go number four goes away this goes down this one comes out this is for three blue ones it's also not good for me um, and then i can buy so i'm gonna buy this one for four so i have one left so now I basically have a double I have two of these so i need to get make sure my pinkies are going very far and then this one comes here new one that comes out is gain two spook juice for each class six lord in your order of spice jack uh, spider jack so for every six i have zero sixes this is useless to me but then of course this one goes away this one goes away new one comes out so up 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 and up and then this one this one and gain 10 spook juice if you have at least one grunt ghost and minion in the same neighborhood so that seems like something you would do in the last turn quickly buy a ghost and put it where you have a minion and one to get a quick 10 points it's pretty good all right so my dice also goes back and go up to the fifth round there's only two rounds left so i need to swap these and then have four five six and two red ones there Okay, for him. Oh, great, no red. So five, four, one, and one. And for me, is it four, five? Okay, I was holding five. Oh, you're kidding me. Four green ones. Three, 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 four. That sucks. All right, his turn first. He'll take a white one. Um, but there is no white though. What does it even mean, white one? Is that because, huh? I guess, is that yellow? That's supposed to be yellow, but we have yellow though. I guess it just means the highest value then. Because there is no white. Ah, white means no color preference. Ah, there you go. So just the highest basically. So hop, take black five. All right, for me, the four is actually good because I can swap out the four. So I get a four. That's also good for here actually. Uh, vroom 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 so he's gonna get a three i don't even have to look there's only his only option is three and um, then i'm gonna get another four because of the same reason as before even though they all give me jack-o-lanterns it's, it's really bad i'm just gonna do this one there we go Hup. he will take uh the lowest so it's black one i'll get a green three and then I'll get a yellow four and I get a green three. All right, so his score, so this is five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, so that's here and here. He's about to reach a hundred. Three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, he's at 99. And then one, two, three, four, six six points so he's at 106 so to keep track i just put a uh, zombie because there's no 100 point score marker okay so yeah we'll talk about the score later um all right then it's my turn so i can move green twice that's interesting and um so they can jump over each other so i'll do that first 
I'll use the four. Well, it doesn't really matter. This jumps here, so I get one point because of the potion. Um, then three, so he will jump over him. Boom, to here. Okay, and then we have yellow. That allow me to do a plus minus. So, plus minus. That means I could change one of the fours into five. So I think I'll change the yellow to five. There we go. And then I use pink. So, boom, boom, boom to here. There we go. All right, I really need to try to get the at least one of these three home. All right, so um, I need to put a four here. So it's going to be the green four that allows me to place a minion at least. Um, but I don't necessarily need to do it now. If I place the one here, then I can move this twice and also change the number. So I move it once. And then I score this 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 points. There you go. So 25. 25. There you go. And then I have one more that I can move. Um, I'm just going to do this one. Uh, do this one. And then I can change a number, one up or one down. So I guess I'll just change this one to a three. Yeah. All right. So I still have these left. Um, put a four here. Jack lanterns is useless, but I can place or move a minion. Um, and that minion is going to be moving not here because it's too good. Well, everything is good except the Jack lanterns, so I'll put it here. So blue can jump over easily. Um, and then I have to put the yellow five, right? just to get this done. So I can change the number. So I'll change this one to two. All right, we still need to have red. Ugh. And then this will go here, which gives me two. So I'm back at three. All right, and then I can buy. Now, if I buy a card, I could just buy it for its action on the back. Um, that's a possibility. The black foot is not that good. I'm going to buy a card just for the, the back side. So this goes to zero. Up, 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 up. The new one that comes out. Gain 10 spook juice if you have three black lord dice in one of your spotted jack order rows. Doesn't apply to me. He has three. So this goes to green. And this one goes away. And then also the first one goes away, first one goes away. So up, up, up to come out. Let's do these two. Not that it matters all that much anymore because we're going to go into the last round. Well, it does matter still. Gain two spook juice for each class four lord. In, oh, this is really good. For each class four lord in my order of spider jack. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fours. That's really good. That would be 14 points. And then this one, for each town space, your mummy grunt has spooked. But my mummy is not really worth it. Again. So six last round. These two go back in the bag. All right, I need red. I need at least one red, and I need a six. All right, so that's none of what I need. One, one, three, four. At least the four will allow me to swap out the four, the red four. 
Oh my goodness. It's probably because you blocked red so, so many of them. Okay, I do have a lot of fives. I don't know why I think that's important. Because I can already... Oh, I don't know. There are pink ones though. If I get four pink ones here, I can still get it. And swap a pink, I mean. I'm gonna have to go for pink, I guess. Although this one, put a minion here, and then pos potentially both of these can get home. Now that cannot be underestimated either. Oh, first him, highest, so he gets the black four. He's gonna get the blue five. Blue five uh, can be used to increase a five to six though. And also moves once. I'm gonna get the blue five. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. <laughs> Blue five. Okay. Hep. So he's going to get the pink one now because it's the highest. Oh, no. He's just going to get a blue two because he wants blue. Highest is second. All right. Now for me, um, uh, oh, maybe a three. No, this one. It allows me to score some stuff. All right. So, hop, hop. Um, he is going to choose the lowest one. So, green one. And then, I like the green one too. Because we get to do this, which is score a lot and move a lot. So, I'm going to do this one. And then I get the yellow three and he gets a pink five. Scoring first for him. So four points, five, six, seven, eight plus two is 10. So he is now 110, 116. Then this is two, three plus two is five. So he's gonna have 11. So is it 21 actually? He has doubled me. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 2 is 7. So that's 8. All right, my turn. So the order doesn't really matter in this case, I think. Uh, zombie is now here. The mummy is going to jump over the other mummy. Gives me two points. Yeah, two points. Two juice. And then the skeleton just moves up one spot. And then the uh, werewolf is boing, boing, boing. Almost home. All right. And then I can get to use my stuff. So... Yeah, I should have taken that pink die. I don't know what I was thinking. So I cannot get the same color ones. I'm not going to be able to get 50. I mean, I have four yellows, but I don't have the... I can't, I can't move them around. So I want to move. So I'm going to put this one here. Get, get a minion from here and place it here. Then I can move those uh, spots twice. So one, two, activate this. One, two, seven, nine, 11 points. So 38. Then another one. Or if I did a five. All right, I'll do the five. This one goes home. Then I increase this red five to six. 
Then I throw this card away and I swap this five with six. Oh, shoot. Oh, come on. So at least I have one, three, four, five, six now and all fours, so that's good. Um, okay. And then I'm going to use this one because it allows me to move again. And get some money. Yeah, it's going to have to be like that. That means my pink ones don't make it. Or I just score all this. That would be 11, 15, 18, 20, 21. Yeah. If I have this one make it, it's three. So three, six, nine, twelve. If he makes it, it's an extra twelve points. That is if I do the foot here. Um, is there anybody else I can move that will allow me some other stuff? I don't think so. No, there's no real movement left. Well, it definitely has to be this because this doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to score this one. Because otherwise I'll just move once. And this gives me the most points. So yeah, 2, 11, 15, 18, 21. So down to 50, 9. I'm up to 59, there we go. And then this three goes here, which gives me two. And then for sure I'll use all these. I'm not gonna use a special ability for that. Just to have someone, uh... wait. Actually, I could use this to have that one finish. So this one gives me one for each spot they have spooked, right? So that's basically 24 points, the same as them actually finishing. So that doesn't really make a difference for this one. But for this one, that's, this one is eight points. This one is eight points. But if I sacrifice it, then this will become 12 points. So I sacrifice it for the ability to move so this one arrives. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Because that would have been eight points. This guy arriving is three, six, nine, twelve. So that's better. Okay, so um, we buy. I only have two, which is useless. I could buy one of those ghosts, but I have nothing that does anything but ghosts. So I'm not going to buy anything. Then um, he will buy this one, add it to here, discard this one. I'm not even going to refresh because it's not necessary. There's no more buying. And then final scoring. Um, okay, so he doesn't score. He doesn't have final scoring. So his final score is already on the board. Uh, to make it more difficult, I could give him the points that I didn't score. So he has 128, okay? And I have, at the moment, 59. So with endgame scoring, I have to try to beat him to that. So let's go to final scoring. Um, you remove the die that your dies don't cover, but they cover everything, so I don't need to remove anything. Gain juice for the final area. So once again, it's 2 times 3 is 6 times 1, 2, 3, 4 is 24. So... 20 and then 4 so uh up. that's 83 then a uh, prophecy card so i did the top which gives me 16 and i did the bottom which gives me 20 so that's 36 so um 30 is 110 and then 6 is at 9 all right, so 
Then we have um, the Arch Monster cards. So this one gives me one point for each town space that I have spooked. So both of them are here. It's 12. So it's 24, uh, this card. So that's 30 plus four. So that's three, and go down one more. Then this one is for um, each of my octopus grunts. Oh, actually I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it because it's both of them. So this is actually 17, 17. If I kept the other one, it would have been 34. All right, 17, 10, and then plus seven. So that's another 10. So that's it. Basically, I win 160 against 128. So I guess we could say that um, it does make sense that they score so much because you can really score a ton of points at the end of the game. All right. Cool. Okay. So uh, I'll uh, let you know what, you, what I think about it. How do I feel about this game? But it's really, really, really early, though, to be honest. Okay, here we go. All right. So I played once today and we played wrong, um, but only a little bit wrong. So not very, very wrong. And then I played solo now, which I think is correct. Um, my feelings at the moment is that this is a really cool game. Really cool game. The fact the dice give you so many options, uh, which ones are you going to push forward? Which, what are you going to focus on? Do you focus on getting these as far as possible? Because there's a ton of points in this area. Um, there's a ton of points in reaching to the end as well. Same with the cards at the end of the game. If you really focus on it, your prophecy card, these cards are cool. They're pretty difficult, but they're cool. There's a wide variety of these as well, like having different cards in different spaces like Sagrada and so on, that's all in there. There's even one that says, okay, this die minus this die has to be this die, stuff like that. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of like, ooh, how am I, how am I going to do this? Uh, the ghosts are cool if you go for them. Like this time I didn't go for them. But when you do, basically every spot can give you extra bonuses and extra actions. Okay, these guys, they always fall over. All right, they do. Especially if you're like me and you're doing a lot of stuff like this. You can see it's beautiful. It's the Miko art. It's colorful. It's nice. Um, very cool. The cars are cool as well. I wasn't, I'm not as crazy with two out of four of them, but I'm going to paint them and I think they'll, they'll look even cooler then. So, uh, it's just cool to be giving around, you know, has, has a Taverns of Tiefenthal feel, the dice drafting and everything. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, very strategic. Like at one point you are looking like, I don't want to give you that die or whatever. If you've, if you're nearing the end of the game and you're seeing what they're getting, which, which cards they're getting, right? You kind of want to sabotage a little bit. There is a fair bit of hate drafting because you can buy a card that somebody wants, but then maybe it's useless to you, but then you just use it for the action in the back, which can really make a huge difference at the end of the game. Uh, if you have a good money engine, you can just buy up cards and their extra actions have like a huge power move at the end of the game, for example. Um, one thing I'm missing is plus 100 tokens, but I just use, as you can see, a monster according to the color, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the solo game, I think it's cool. Um, it definitely has promise because there's a lot of ways, sorry, there's a lot of ways to make it more difficult. For example, uh, one of the more difficulty, one of the added difficulties would have been that I give the points that I was not able to do on my prophecy card. So that would have been plus 14 to, to the AI. He would still have not beaten me, but it would have come closer already. Other ways is that he would score more of these. So of course his, his totals will go up. Um, he would get extra ghosts at the start of the game, stuff like that. Okay. But I, I imagine if I play solo more, I'll be able to uh, mitigate the damage he does more as well. I make sure he has less sixes and so on because that really gave him huge boosts. Near the end of the game when he had like ones and twos, it wasn't that bad actually. So it's down to me as well, you know, my, my own problem. And it's just cool when you're choosing dice, you have different um, thought processes that you go through. Like you want to get a color so certain ones move, but then the icons are so important for everything else 
yeah it's uh i don't know it looks cute and everything uh, originally i said to my friends i'm not going to paint them but then when you look at the the minis right they do have significant uh, or noticeable parts that would look way cooler if you if you painted them right so maybe maybe i will but then again i say i'm gonna paint stuff so often who knows if it ever happens but i'm very happy this is definitely a kickstarter that i'm gonna keep that i'm not going to sell um yeah it is it's nice it's a nice little game the rule book takes a while to get a hang off to be honest because it's not a hundred percent clear i had to go through it several times to wrap my head around it and how it exactly worked uh it doesn't it doesn't hold your hand for example it says you buy a ghost and 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 then you place it but they don't specifically say that when your unit goes on it you get the rewards and everything my gut feeling was oh you get the ghost you get the reward you continue but no you put it on the board and when you are on top of it you get it and so on i think i am not buying ghosts because i really want to get to the end but then on the other hand if you do buy ghosts they can they can really help you mitigate sorry which this stuff a lot more and you can get a ton of points here for example i had here what 8 16 20 24 if i had gone all the way to the end with my uh summoning uh stone i would have been able to score it again you know i scored it once actually so that's 48 points you can get just there um here was what 11 15 18 21 but if you have like all sixes or stuff like that then it gets crazy right and these endgame scoring cards are really cool as well um it can also make big differences yeah it's cool it's another final frontier games that i really like uh the other one uh, was a uh, merchant's cove also really nice yeah and like i said i played this once now with friends and they really liked it the, the mistake that we made was that you when you got it you were able to immediately score it uh, or score when you wanted it and then flip it and then use the action again which is too much <laughs> We were 200 plus points. So no, you, these are endgame scoring cards, but dur during the game, you can decide not to score them and use the back and discard them. So that's how that works. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Uh, on the back of the board, you also have a family mode and uh, that makes it a lot easier. It's just color coded and no special actions. And uh, as you can see, I have the plastic mobiles. I'm gonna uh, assemble the other ones, but I'm probably gonna give them to my daughter so she can play with them. <laughs> Uh, put her little uh, figurines in them okay yeah i think that's enough uh, th those are my initial impressions my first impressions of the game i uh, am also very interested in the expansions because it introduces a lot of wacky stuff like for example one of them is these cards are all gone but instead you're creating a banquet where you have to deliver food to the tables where the monsters are eating and then you get the cards as a reward and all that kind of stuff there is a bodybuilding uh, machine there's a marathon and what bodybuilding machine but bodybuilding uh, competition there's a marathon there's one where you build an abomination lots of different things um so yeah i'll try and make a video with other people as well and uh, hopefully that'll work and maybe even do solo with some of the uh, modules to see what that looks like all right Okay, that's it. This was me, Joachim, and always will be. Uh, this, was so many, so, this was so many games, so little time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.